Hi there and welcome to the first row in the 2022 collection of 30 minute rows. Now I did this last year where I did 30 straight days of 30 minute rows and I made sure to say that you don't have to do the same. You don't have to do all 30 one day after another. You can take rest days if you wish or you don't have to do all 30. You can just do like row 1, 7, 9, 15 and stop there. But if you do all 30, get in touch at info at rowalong.com and I will send you a certificate saying that you've completed the 30 days of 30 minute rows. So, as to today's row, what we're going to do is going to break it into three minute chunks. We're going to do the first one at 24 strokes a minute and the next one at 20 strokes a minute. Now, as for the pace, I'm going to talk about that in today's warm up. So, we're going to do a five minute warm up to give me enough time to talk about that. So, we have to set up our machine first. Now, I'm going to talk about Concept 2, but obviously, if you're not in a Concept 2, you set up your machine how you need to set it up, right? So, on that Concept 2, set your drag factor to where you want it to be. If you don't know anything about drag, factor just set it between four and five that's going to be okay for the time being and then you can watch the video I have here on the channel where I talk about drag factor and where you might want to set it again if you're not in a concept two just set it so that it's you get a nice feel from the stroke but you don't have to heave against it, it shouldn't be too tough next up go to your monitor and set it at eye height if you can and finally if you're able to adjust your foot stretchers set them to a height where you're able to come to the front with your shins pointing vertically comfortably if you're set too high it might be a bit tough to get there if you're set too low you might go scooting past and you might get your toes all caught up and gnarled and uh, okay so this five minute uh, warm up we're going to start at 20 strokes a minute and I don't want you to push too hard with your feet for the time being because I want you to think about that kind of power from your feet connecting to your hands so if you push too hard you miss that so just enough of a light push to get the stroke going and then we'll worry about power after a while all right so here we go in three two one let's go so it's almost like you're just standing up, okay? So say you were just squatting down and standing up. That's the amount of power you're putting into this stroke at the start. Because after all, this is a warm up. We want to start warming up. We're not going absolute full guns from the start. And what I want you to do is think about when your feet push into the foot plates and when your hands connect the handle to the machine. And ideally, you want both of them to happen at the same time. So you push as your hands connect the handle to the machine. And if you have a forwards tilt, so you're leaning towards the front of the machine and straight arms, as you do that, the power from your feet goes into the machine and you don't have to pull from the front. So keep those arms straight and then you only pull at the back, okay? So now, if you've got that timing right, you can start to think about adding in a bit more of a push. And what you wanna do is take this up in exertion so that your breathing rate increases, your heart rate increases, if you have a heart rate monitor on, but it doesn't feel too taxing. It's almost like it's just a little bit more intense than climbing up a flight of stairs or a continual flight of stairs. So slightly out of breath, but you can still hold the conversation. And that's kind of the pace I want you to be at. And it's also the pace that when we're rowing the 20 strokes a minute sections today, you want to be rowing at. So just that nice, you know you're working but it's not too taxing because when you roll the 24 strokes a minute sections, they become taxing. So they run about seven out of 10 exertion for those 24s. And that means, you know, you're working quite hard, but not so, you're not at maximum, but you're kind of thankful when those three minutes are up. And if you have a 2K training pace, this might be lost in a few of you, but for those that do, I want you to roll the 24 strokes a minute at 2K plus 12 seconds and the 20 strokes a minute at 2K plus 18. So basically you go six seconds faster for the 24s than the 20s. Does that make sense? Right, two more strokes. And then we're going to put one foot on the ground. So take one foot out of the straps, put it on the ground, continue rowing. 
don't worry too much in this little section whether you lose five or six seconds as you're getting your feet in and out it's not that important I mean you want to still get strapped in and be able to row with one leg in but if you lose a couple of strokes it's not a problem so let's swap feet put one in take the other one out keep going and this just helps with helps a little bit with that flexibility helps with that forward tilt a little bit as well because you don't have both feet strapped in and it gets a little bit tight sometimes it's easier to come forwards shins vertical forwards tilt with just one leg in let's hit one more stroke and then we're going to put both feet back in don't worry about tightening the straps keep your legs straight and then roll with your back and arms so that means swinging your back first with those straight arms so you swing over your hips and then you pull in your arms and then out with your arms and tilt forwards back over your hips again so swing pull out rock so rock pull out rock rock's a better word isn't it okay let's get to the front tighten your straps on the way arms straight forward tilt and just press lightly out from the front like that power that you started off with because again I want you to think about that timing of your feet pushing and the handle connecting but also holding that forwards tilt and straight arms as you do it so you're not pulling your arms at all and you're not swinging your back and it's so important in your stroke that you can manage to do that boom so that's a five minute warm-up done now what you're about to see is me with slightly different hair no I don't think I've got a beard but this is going to be the video that I recorded last year because I'm cheating you haha <laughs> well I've recorded it once so um, this is what I'm going to do in this series of videos is I'm going to do a new warm-up and a new cool down but the row itself is going to be lifted from last year so apologies if there's any weird references in it <laughs> but hopefully it'll all make sense so I will see you in the cool down and I hope you enjoy this first row of the collection okay then so 30 minutes, I'm gonna start at that faster, 24 strokes a minute in 2K plus 12 pace, okay? So um, let's just kind of hit the ground running on this one. Okay, you ready for this? Let's go in three, two, one, go. <clears throat> right, so 24 strokes a minute. It's a lovely stroke rate because it's one stroke every two and a half seconds and it's a nice for me even rhythm of drive and return I'm still taking slightly longer over the return but it doesn't feel like I have to slow down at all in order to do so whereas at the lower stroke rates like 20 and 18 you have that time to slow down and think about your body position and the phases of the stroke once you get up to 24 you need to start thinking more fluidly in order to keep the stroke rate up I'll talk about that in a minute So, for stroke rate, you can just watch me, if you're on YouTube, just drive, when I drive, recover, when I recover. If you are listening to this on the podcast, then just follow the whoosh of my flywheel and also my speech pattern is usually quite in time with my stroke rate but hopefully once you get into the swing of these intervals 
you won't need to actively listen or watch what I'm doing you'll just fall into line with it right so as we don't have any graphics on screen I have to be more precise about time so 30 seconds to go until the next or the first change when we're going to go down to 20 strokes per minute and 2k plus 18 pace in four three two one here we go then so ease off slower stroke rate and backing right down to 2k plus 18 pace now if you don't have a 2k time that's okay I do recommend doing a 2000 meter time trial so that you have a accurate training time because it's a very effective way to track your progress and also to keep on improving so if you did an 8 minute 2k you would train with your 2 minute 2k training pace and then at the end or after a few weeks you do another 2k time trial and then maybe that time you manage that in 7 minutes and 52 seconds taking 8 seconds off your time so your new training pace would be 158 and suddenly all your sessions are going to be a little bit harder because you're rowing a little bit faster that as a result you then get faster and the next time round maybe you go another 8 seconds faster for your 2k and take another 2 seconds off your training pace so that's kind of how you can use your training pace to have a constant gauge of where you are and increase in your training so you can basically do, do the same 4 week training plan 30 seconds to go same 4 week training plan and because you're going faster each time it will always be effective for you okay in four three two one here we go 24 strokes a minute 2k plus 12 pace which really just means you need to increase the intensity of your rowing stroke did I miss I think I may have missed the stroke there, sorry so for those who don't have a 2k training time you can use the RPE system rate of perceived effort the danger is you have to be quite honest about your effort and not just I don't feel like it today <laughs> but say these 20 strokes a minute sections at 2k plus 18 they might be 
five or six out of ten RPE. So you just think, okay, six out of ten effort. And then as you increase to 24s, like we are right now, you might be seven to eight out of ten. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but actually you can soon kind of work out what your numbers should be based on what you think your RPE is. So if I thought I was rowing at 7 out of 10 and I saw the numbers were showing 155 for this session, then I just make sure and hold 155 every time it came to rowing at 24 strokes per minute. I'll talk more about RPE in a future row in the 3030s. Talking to 30, just under 30 seconds to go. And then we go down to 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 for what should feel like a bit of a rest. Okay, four, three, two, one, and back down, 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 pace. So this should feel, from an effort point of view, that it's reduced. So if you were at seven or eight, in the last interval now you should feel five or six and the way to change that intensity is about the amount of push that you put into the machine because that power from your legs not only controls the speed, the pace that you're rowing at, but also it kind of, if you have a good rhythm, it controls your stroke rate as well. So if I push a little softer than before, into the machine, my drive speed, the amount of time it takes me to go from front to back, will be slightly slower. So a softer push means less power into the machine, slightly slower drive phase, and then if I have a good two to one rhythm where my drive is twice as fast as my recovery, then that should help get that stroke rate down from 24 to 20. In the same way that in 40 seconds time, when we increase again, it's about putting in more of a push from your legs. So you'll have a faster drive speed and then a faster recovery too. That takes your stroke rate up. Okay, four, three, two, one, here we go, 2K plus 12, 24 strokes per minute. So push harder with your legs. That will increase 
your stroke rate. The extra power will increase your pace, but also you're taking four strokes a minute more than you were before, which increases your pace too. But it's all very good saying it's about pushing with the legs. But maybe some of you sitting there thinking, um, what about my arms? <laughs> That's fair enough. You need your arms to work in two ways. The first is a conduit of power so that as you push with your legs, that power transfers from your legs into the flywheel. But then once your legs have run out of power, your hands, your arms, take over and then they pull to add in a wee bit of power so you'll have heard or maybe you've heard some people say that rowing is about pushing and not pulling it's true from the front of the machine but you do still need to pull at the back. So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. And that whole time before I'm saying pull, you keep your arms straight. Don't bend the elbows. Don't grab and fight. Arms long and straight. All right, 20 seconds until we ease off a bit again. Four, three, two, last one. Back down to 20s. And 2K plus 18 pace. And we're halfway there. It's the Bon Jovi time. And it's easier to think about your arms as we slow down to this rate. So you can really think straight pull, straight pull, straight pull. And do take a look at your elbows and try to see if you're bending them early. What I mean is that you're grabbing, that you kind of pick up the handle by really fighting using your biceps and your shoulders rather than the much bigger muscles from your legs. Because not only are you fighting and not letting that power from your legs go through to the machine when you grab early, but you're also wasting potential arm pull. Like if you look, straight arms, pull. I have the whole range, pull, of my arms, pull when I eventually do pull at the back. Whereas if I grab at the front, I've got like a half thing that I'm doing that then means I'm doing some weird crumple with my stroke. 
to try to get that power in. And to be honest, I just slowed down by like seven seconds, even though I was trying to put in the same amount of power. All right, 30 seconds to go until our next change up. And so that's what most of technique is about. It's about efficiency and getting that power in. Okay, three, two, one. Alrighty, let's go up to 24s again. 2K plus 12 pace. Should be really familiar now. That boost as you increase your speed and stroke rate. And again, this is where your fluid arms really come into play. So you keep them straight and then when you pull in nice and powerfully at the back, due to the ligaments and muscles and even your rib cage, your arms will want to return slightly forwards again. And so you use that natural springiness to start your arm recovery so that as your arms go forwards they trigger the forward lean over your back or over your hip sorry with your back and then by the time your hands are over your knees you're in that forward lean your body weight is on the front of the seat if you have a good primed posture and then all you have to do is bend your knees and you will slide to the front of the machine with very little energy or effort needed to get you to the front but because you're doing it all as a fluid motion you're never stopping this is what helps with the higher stroke rates 30 seconds to go this workout is rattling by it's kind of what I'm hoping to do with most of these 30s is design ways to make them go quickly okay four three two one down to 20s it's got three intervals left Now that fluid motion from phase to phase of the stroke is just as important on these stroke rates, the slower ones, because this can be where people become a little bit unstuck, let's say because they're not used to taking so much time over the stroke. So like I say, it's about a two to one ratio. And at 20 strokes a minute, that means one second drive and then two seconds recover. 
and you use that two seconds to recover but you're still moving so you don't stop it's not drive for a second hold for a second back for a second which I see quite often so that's not the point the point is to use these lower stroke rates to work on this fluid motion of arms so they go in out and then arms back arms back knees it's all running into each other there's never a point when I am stopped I'm letting my body's momentum take me through the stages of the stroke 30 seconds to go and that's really important for getting power in using your body's momentum and that's why you have the forward lean along with the straight arms three two one here we go the last 24s 2k plus 12 and you lean into the front of the machine and you hold that forward tilt remember it's a tilt over the hips not a crumple you're not collapsing into the front but you hold that position to let the power get into the machine from your legs first and then once your legs are about halfway done that's when you finally swing your upper body over your hips from that forward lean to the backward lean and that swing adds in a lot of power if you switch to the force curve and look at the difference between holding a forward lean and not you're just like this the difference is huge get a nice rising curve if you hold the forward lean then add in your back whereas it's more of a straight line row or force curve sorry if you break your back too soon or swing your back too soon uh, sorry my fluffy bit just fell off my microphone and I got easily distracted <laughs> okay closing in the last 45 seconds of this interval and then you get a nice active finish for the last three minutes and hopefully if you're not used to rowing 30 minute pieces this one will have eased you nicely into it it's very easy to go too hard on a 30 4 3 2 1 ok back to 20s that's kind of one of my intentions 
or the reasons why I'm doing those 30 days of 30s is to try to improve my own rows over 30 minutes so what I intend to do or what I'm doing this Sunday anyway is I'm joining up with Fitness Matters who do a 9 o'clock in the morning UK time 30 minute row using the Erg Race app get that the right way around so they use Erg Race for 30 minutes which you're welcome to join in just check out I'll post details of the race to find but I'm going to do that for the four available Sundays across this 30 days of 30s and hopefully by the end of it we'll all have got used to rowing 30 minutes so much that the last one if we do it as a time trial we'll really do well now, that's not to say that I expect people to do all 30 days of these rows you can still just come and go as you please pick and choose what rows you want to do after all 30 days of 30s with no rests is going to push me a bit so I don't want other people to be kind of lulled into thinking you have to do the same if your energy resources dip take a rest day you can always extend into December to finish off all 30 rows if you wish okay three strokes to go and then we're done with the main session Ooh, there we go ah, I hope you managed to follow along okay and you held your pace on both sets of intervals so I hope you enjoyed that workout as much as I did. It's a really fun one with the 24 strokes a minute push and then the 20 strokes a minute kind of calm thing. It gives you a chance to think about your technique and also just your body responds quite nicely to that kind of push and the relax. So, so let's get into a two minute cool down and then we'll do some stretching afterwards. Now we're going to do this around about your, your 20 strokes a minute pace if you want to back off in a four or five seconds and please do just to make sure that your body cools down after what was hopefully quite an intense workout for you. So. Here we go then, two minutes, cool down in three, two, one, let's go. Oh. It's always a good idea to cool down, regardless of what kind of workout you've just done. Whether it's a 2K time trial and your body's just filled with all of the acid deposits from working at absolute maximum, or whether it's just a 30 minute at 20 strokes a minute row it's always a good idea just to get into the habit of it lets your blood system kind of clean itself out lets your brain clear itself out to be honest I mean especially for these kind of workouts where you're holding a specific pace and a specific stroke rate it can be quite mentally taxing so a two minute cool down just lets you kind of I don't know, clear out any kind of knots in your brain. <laughs> Do you get knots in your brain? <laughs> Can't be a good thing. But you get knots in your muscles, so let's just think of it that way. So if I remember rightly, my intention when I did this last year was that I was going to record them all and do no post-production to them so there's a good chance that's what I was talking about during the row 
was about, oh, there's no metrics on screen and stuff. Uh, but that all changes. I think by the third workout or something, I start to put up the data, the, the metrics from my row, because people were beginning to ask for it. So if I can try and find the metrics for this one on the logbook, I'll see if I can put them on, but I don't think I even ran ErgZone with it. So, okay. So that's us at the end of the cool down. We're going to go into a stretching section. Now, if you don't have time to stretch, that's perfectly okay, but just please make sure and stretch at least your quads and your hamstrings, maybe your glutes. Um, don't do it in the shower because I don't want you to slip and fall over. But at least give your hamstrings and glutes a stretch because they're going to have taken a good old beating through that row. Otherwise, you can join Stretching John, who will take you through some guided stretches, or I will take you through some, but on the machine, or at least next to the machine, if you don't have space for a stretching mat or a stretching area. So we'll start off with hamstrings. So put your feet back in the straps. They should be nice and loose from you taking yourself just out just then. Um, put your hands in the air and then fold forwards, okay? So it's like you're praying down to your feet. And it's important you do this as a fold, not like a, a roll of your lower back or your upper back. You want to make sure and fold. And then what should happen is you get really nice stretch down here in your hamstrings. If you don't, there's a chance you've maybe just rounded your back instead of doing the fold, or maybe you've got the angles wrong of your feet. Maybe you don't have your legs straight. Maybe you've got a, like a little bend in your knees and that's gonna uh, undo the stretch you could get in your hamstrings. So uh, it's important that you just work. You kind of get used to your own body, how you need to do it there. I can tell you what to do, but you have to do it yourself. So do glutes next. I've still got <laughs> marks on my legs. Um, do glutes next. So next, so one leg up on the beam, if you want to call it that, or the monorail. Put your other leg over it so that the, your heel is in the crook of your knee. Bring your other knee across your body so it's kind of in line with everything else. I'm not going to turn it away from you now. And then hold on to the back of the machine and rotate into your glute. That's your bottom muscle, basically. So you just rotate and hold this knee that's kind of coming across your body in place. And what you should find is that this gives you a really nice stretch into your glutes. Again, the angles that you're at here are gonna make a huge difference. How much you pull this knee across your body really can affect the amount of stretch you get into your glute. How much you then rotate down into it also makes a huge difference. I'm gonna uh, swap legs. So put that foot over, bring this knee across, hold it in place with this arm. Hello hold on to the back of the machine and then rotate down. And that rotation really is the trigger here, especially with that pulling of the, the knee. Now holding onto the back of the machine is really just to stop me falling off. <laughs> so you don't have to worry if you're like, I can't reach the back of the machine. Um, yeah, so that, that's the point of, of that. But you should really feel it right in here, right in your glutes. And it's like what it, the, your glutes and your core are so important that you work on them, you stretch them and you build them and you strengthen them because they can be responsible for so many things. Like knee problems can actually be because of your glutes because your, your body's kind of compensating for sore glutes and things. So if you can really just make sure to stretch them, it's really important. So I'm gonna do quads next. So stand next to the machine. You can rest one hand on the monitor if you wish and then flick one leg up behind you or the other leg behind you and then hold your heel against your backside. So if I come around like that. So hold your heel against your backside. Try and have a straight line from your shoulder down through your hips into your knee. So that hopefully has a good enough posture. And then as you kind of, you um, hold that heel against your backside, you should feel your quad getting a really nice stretch. If you feel the stretch anywhere else, you've probably got the angles of your body wrong. Um, so you might be kind of tilting forwards or you might be, uh, your knee could be forwards or, or who knows, who knows what's going in there. But, um, it's meant to be your quads, especially, whoops. Um, if you feel it up here in your hip flexors, then you're, uh, you've got your angles wrong. So make sure and keep a nice posture. Uh, I tend to hold quite high up on my foot rather than down at the toes because I don't want to stretch and uh, irritate the tendons in my feet. If I was going to hold on to my toes, then suddenly that's quite sore across the top of my foot. So holding on to kind of the ankle is, uh, better. Right, I'm going to do those hip flexors next. So I'm going to do this one. Uh, I'll do one with one knee down the ground and the next one with a knee off the ground. So one knee on the ground, 90 degree angle. Quite, my legs are filthy. <laughs> Another, the other leg in front of you. Again, a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you're nice and prone. And then all you do is you push this hip forwards and this knee will then come over the top of this foot. 
Okay, so you keep a good posture, but all you're doing is pushing into um, this hip. And now you should really feel right up here in your hip flexors. You should get a really nice stretch and like, oh, there we go, that's where it's meant to be. Now your hip flexors do take a little bit of a battering, especially at the back of the stroke, but um, it's quite easy to blame them for uh, flexibility issues that can often be your hamstrings or even your, your glutes or your quads. So um, do check out the Jeff Cavalier video about um, should you be stretching your hip flexors. I always bring him up. Right, so let's change feet. So basically this is the same position as before, but if you raise whoop, that knee off the ground, let's say you don't have a, a suitable place to put the knee down, then you can do it this way and still push into that hip, okay? So you're still pushing that hip forwards with a good um, posture. Might want to, like I just did, be close enough to the machine that you can kind of steady yourself if you fall over. It puts a lot of force into this front leg, though. That's the only thing I can't, I never, I always feel like I get more like a, a, a lunge feel into this leg rather than stretching the other one. But if you don't have a place to stretch where you can put your knee down on the ground, it is a way to do it. But it takes a little bit of practice to get it right to make sure you get the stretch into the into the hip flexor. I'm gonna have to stretch it afterwards because I'm rubbish at doing it that way. Anyway, right, next up, forearms. Okay, so clasp your hands in front of you and then bring them down in front, but push your hands together as you do, okay? So you'll end up in this position with your fingers at right angles to your, to your wrists and push in together. And what you should find is that right under here, it gets a nice stretch underneath your forearms and your fingers should get a nice stretch too. And maybe in today's workout, it shouldn't have been that taxing on your forearms and fingers, but there are some workouts out there that really are taxing on your forearms and fingers. So this is a really good stretch to do. Um, really, even after today's kind of session to make sure that you've got nice flexible fingers and, and forearms. So uh, like if you're doing a 500 meter time trial, especially when it does get to the point at the end of that where you really are pulling um, even from the front, just trying to squeeze every last meter out of it for the, like the last 20 seconds of it. Forearms can really end up like bricks almost. So um, it was a person at a climbing wall that told me this is what to do if you end up with that kind of solid underneath forearms. Shoulders next, so hands straight in front of you, bring it across your body and then loop this arm up. Just hold to pull that shoulder, the, the arm across your body to stretch your, your shoulder. So I suddenly realized that some of the ways I describe this makes absolutely no sense to anyone listening on a podcast. And so I said halfway through that sentence, I was trying to think, how do I say this to a way that a podcast person would understand? But yeah, I've got one arm going right across my body. It's being kind of braced and almost like pulled back by um, uh, looping my other arm over it. That still makes no sense, does it? Let's change arms, do exactly the same thing. <sighs> Your shoulders shouldn't really take that big much of a beating when it comes to rowing. It should be like the connection at the front of the machine should be like a straight power line, straight, like straight, 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 all the way through your shoulders into the into your fingers. So if you find that your shoulders are sore after rowing, there's a chance you're either pulling too soon or you're kind of shrugging me, 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 me. Uh, with your shoulders up way too high and that's why you got all this tension up here. So keep those shoulders low. Even if you have like an outwards rotation, um, of your, not this much, but like an outwards rotation of your elbows turns your shoulders down, disengages them slightly, and it's much easier to hang off the, the handle when you do your, your stroke. So, uh, next up, let's do uh, biceps. So we're gonna pretend we're ski jumpers. So, whee, it's jumping, 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 but then we rotate our thumbs outwards. Okay, so we're flying through the air. Oh, the crikey, we're quite high up. Oh, look at all that snow. But hey, we're getting a good stretch into our biceps. Um, yeah, <laughs> so the, the rotation of the thumbs, that all that does is it, it lengthens the long head of your bicep, and that's where you get the stretch from, from kind of doing, like, like, like that's nothing, that is just ski jumping, but the moment you rotate your thumbs outwards, you get a nice stretch to those biceps. But what it also does is it contracts your triceps, so we have to stretch them next. So, put one hand in the air, down your back, so it touches your spine, and then you've got one elbow pointing to the sky, but make sure it's pointing to the sky by using your other hand, to just help it stretch back. And this should mean that your fingers go slightly down your spine a little bit more. Um, and you should feel like you're getting a nice wee stretch into your triceps when you do this. Uh, what the ideal goal for this, for optimum flexibility, is that you then put this hand up your back and you should be able to interlock fingers. But I've got rubbish shoulders, so I can't do that. I think I can do it a little bit better on this one. <laughs> no, let's swap arms. So basically exactly the same thing, just, Keep that elbow kind of pointing straight to the sky. Reach for the sky. And this is the last of our stretches, okay? So just a wee triceps. Um, 
So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to remake my 30 days of 30 minute rows was to add these stretching uh, pieces onto the end of all of them. Because usually what happens, I do the row and then I'd rant for six minutes at the end of it and people would just be sitting there in the gym going, is he ever going to shut up? And then I suddenly realise, hey, hang on, I should actually get people to stretch through that time. But then the thing is I don't rant, so I then also add on the rant. So I'm not going to today. <laughs> so this, like I say, was the first row in the collection of 30, but you don't have to do all 30. You can pick and choose. This is a medium intensity. So any day you think, I just want to do like a medium intensity, you can just pick one of these. Or you can do all 30 in a row. And like I say, if you then get in touch with me and say, hey, look, yeah, I promise I did it. I'll send you a certificate, PDF, put your name on it, say you've completed it and then you can go, oh, great, that was worth it. <laughs> but think of the fitness gains and the power gains and the speed gains you're going to get from doing it. That's the real reason to do it. So. So there we go, that was the first one done and dusted. Do let me know uh, whether you enjoyed it. Let me know, I'm, I am intending to put up one version with music and one version without music. So do let me know what one you uh, rode along to. Do you like the music? Do you not like the music? But I'm gonna put both up in and we just give people the option. A little bit of A, and a B testing going on there. So uh, the, uh, the 2nd of November, we will put up the next one of these. So I hope you will uh, keep an eye out for that one. Whether you do it on the 2nd of November or whether you just do it in the middle of July, I really don't mind as long as you row along with me then it's all working for me all right so i will see you in one of my other videos until then take care be well bye bye